Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com. This time I'm going to talk about the net energy time bomb. Due to climate change and diminishing fossil fuel supplies, we'll increasingly have to transition to alternative energy sources. The problem is, all of these have a lower net energy yield than conventional petroleum. Every means of producing energy also requires the consumption of energy and physical resources. For example, fossil fuels need to be extracted, transported, refined and burnt in suitable engines or power plants. Wind and wave power similarly require turbines to be produced and maintained, while PV solar technologies require the manufacture of appropriate panels. None of this hardware just springs from thin air and none of it lasts forever. Any sensible assessment of any energy source therefore has to be mindful of its net energy contribution. Net energy is a measure of the energy obtained from an energy source after accounting for the energy consumed in its production. Those who analyse net energy work with a ratio of energy output to energy input known as EROI, or the energy return on investment. So, for example, if the production of 20 units of energy requires a consumption of 1 unit of energy, the EROI of the involved energy source is 20 to 1. Back in the 1930s, the easiest to extract forms of petroleum gushed freely from a well and had an EROI ratio of up to 100 to 1. Today, however, such very easy to extract crude oil is rare, with petroleum having a global EROI of no more than 40 to 1. The global EROI value for petroleum will also diminish further as crude oil gets harder and harder to locate and extract. Those in denial about peak oil often pin their hopes on non-conventional oil or biofuels. Unfortunately, all such petroleum alternatives have low net energy yields. For example, the EROI for shale oil is typically about 5 to 1, while oil extracted from oil sands has an EROI of no more than 7 to 1. The net energy yield of biofuels is even lower at no more than 3 to 1. While cited EROI ratios for traditional coal power stations are up to 80 to 1, clean coal technologies only achieve around 5 to 1. Hydroelectric power has an EROI of maybe 30 to 1, while both natural gas and nuclear fission deliver about 10 to 1. Wind power can deliver a potential EROI of up to 18 to 1, although usually far less. PV solar delivers a maximum EROI of about 7 to 1, while reliable EROI values for concentrated solar power and wave power are not yet established, if not expected to be very high. Net energy values are extremely difficult to calculate and hotly contended. Nevertheless, no serious analyst disputes that the global net energy of petroleum continues to fall. Nor is there any disagreement that the net energy obtained from all major alternative energy sources is far lower than that of conventional fossil fuels. What all of this means is that, while alternative energy sources will be able to fuel the world of tomorrow, they will not be able to power a clone of today. Indeed, by 2030, to go on consuming energy at our current level would require not just a substantial switch to alternative energy sources, but an increase in the scale of a global energy sector of several hundred percent. And this is simply not a realistic proposition. The net energy time bomb is now well and truly ticking, with the net energy yield of all known future energy sources being lower than that of conventional petroleum. As a consequence, fairly soon we will have to transition to low energy lifestyles. More information on this subject can be found in my book, Seven Ways to Fix the World, as well as on explainingthefuture.com. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.